All right, guys. We're going to do a blog here again. Um, I'm going to try to keep it short. I don't want to, I'm going to try not to drag it out too long. Basically, it looks like uh, train and American Standard are getting really heavy into the micro channel. And uh, I'm shooting this video because most of you know my feelings towards train. And I just think it's hilarious about some of the guys out there that are just so train crazy. And I'll say it again uh, because I know somebody will bring it up about how I praise train in some of my older videos than I did. But uh, thank the good Lord I was able to see the light and uh, learned really quickly that it was not all it was cracked out to be because I didn't sell it very long. I don't have very many out there. Um, I got information today from a good buddy of mine here on YouTube that American, he put, put in an American Standard package unit. He helped his father. And the evaporator coil was micro channel. And this is a residential package unit. So, if Train is doing that in their package units, what do you think is going to happen to the residential air handlers and stuff here before too long? I'm telling y'all. People out there that, you know, you can say embrace the technology or, you know, deal with it or this or that. But, I, no, I'm not. Because when I was selling York, I lost money, lots of money, due to leaking microchannel coils. I lost customers over it. My carrier sales rep... And my ICP sales rep, Tipstar, both told me that Carrier and ICP did dabble into micro channel for about a year on commercial only. And it took Carrier less than a year to figure out, okay, no, this ain't going to work. Uh, we're getting away from it. Because that 10 ton package unit I put in the other day, that was aluminum fin copper tube. The train that I showed in that video was micro channel condenser coil. I'm telling you guys, micro channel is a disaster. And I really think it's just a matter of time before, uh, you know, these the, the people that are using it learn that. I mean, obviously York hasn't learned it because they're still using it. I know Nordyne is using it. Um, guys, there's just there's nothing good about it. And on the condenser side of micro channel, if they get dirty, my God. I mean, trying to clean one of those, I can't explain it. All I can tell you is that if you ever walk up on one, you're gonna have fun. And also, if you need to make a repair inside, like if you got a leaky coil, a leaky EVAP under warranty and you need to change it out or you got a bad TXV or blah, 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 you can't pump it down. You better take your recovery machine out because you're not pumping that refrigerant back into that condenser. That micro channel will not hold it. It will not hold it. It's not gonna happen. So, and, you know, I can only imagine with evaporators. I mean, I've never put anything in with a microchannel evaporator. The only one, York was still using a copper tube aluminum fin evaporator when I was selling it. Now, I don't know what they're doing now. I don't know if they're using microchannel evaporators now, but, you know, I really don't care. Um, but I know Nordyne is using microchannel condenser coal and a microchannel evaporator coal. And now, apparently, Trained American Standard are using micro channel evaporators in their residential package units. 
I don't think Train and American Standard will get rid of the spine fin because that's their thing. But I can see them moving their air handlers to micro channel evaporator coils, which would be a total disaster. I mean, if the condenser micro channel coils leak like as many as I've changed, I can't imagine what an evaporator will do. So, but it just goes to show, guys, there's nothing special about trained American Standard. They are low-balling their units just like everybody else, okay? There's really not a good unit out there. Now, I am a huge fan of Carrier and, I, and the ICP family because they're, mainly because they're staying away from microchannel and I've got verification from Carrier and ICP that they will never ever go microchannel on evaporators, condensers, nothing. They dabbled in it already and they're, they'll never do it again. Um, but it just goes to show that you know, Train is, they're making their stuff cheaper and cheaper also. Just like when that uh, plastic air handler came out, I was a huge fan of it at first, but like I said, I saw the light and that thing's a piece of junk, that plastic air handler. I mean, why do you think Train brought back a metal air handler? They didn't bring back a metal air handler for the hell of it. People were complaining. Their dealers were complaining, you know. Um, so, I'm very happy uh, with my ICP equipment um, and you know another thing I want to talk about is that a lot of people bitch about carrier and ICP with the evaporator calls and the air handlers um, now carrier carrier and ICP have two evaporators and the lower tonnages I think it's three and under they have a slant coil which is still copper tube aluminum fin but it's a slant coil it's not an A you know an A coil so Everything comes shipped from the factory with carry an ICP and pretty much everything, I think, every brand. Left-hand discharge and horizontal. Now, with the slant coil, all you do, you simply pull it out, turn it, slide it back in, you're ready for right hand. But on carriers on three and a half, anything above three ton comes with an A coil. And when you have to go to right hand with it, you have to pull the evaporator out of the cabinet and you have to take the... Uh, plate off the top of the coil and you have to switch that diverter plate over and then you have to move the clips off the cabinet to the other side of the cabinet for the horizontal pan to sit in and uh people bitch about that and say well, why can't they do like goodman and york and all them and train and where you just take the whole coil out flip the whole coil and slide it back in well i'm going to tell you why carrier and icp don't do that because carrier and icp are smart Yes, the Goodman coil, this new smart frame air handler, it it was great. You know, you would just, I'm not carrier shit, Goodman, Goodman, I'm sorry. The new Goodman smart frame air handler, yeah, it was. it's a great thing. You pull the evaporator out, <coughs> excuse me, you flip it, and you put it back in. But here's the thing. When that air handler is, is, is sucking air, you know, from the open end of the evaporator, when you turn that evaporator the other way and you got that plate and the, and the evaporator is like this and it's sucking air from, from this way like this, that's an airflow restriction. And it'll even tell you that in the installation manual that by flipping the coil like that, you do restrict the air more and it requires a larger return air. I've read that in Goodman's installation manual in their smart frames. They recommend on right-hand discharge when the coil is like so that you enlarge the return more than you normally would because the coil being like this restricts more airflow. Well, the reason Carrier and ICP do their calls like that is because Yes, it takes a little more time. You have, to, you have to take the top off and move that diverter, and then you got to take the clips off and all that. But when you put the evaporator back in place, you're ready for right hand, but you're still sucking like this. So you're, you're not restricting the airflow. So actually, Carrier and ISP are pretty damn smart. Yeah, it takes a little more time, but I've gotten used to it. I've done so many now, I can do it in five minutes. I mean, I know that the Goodman, you can do it in 
30 seconds or one minute, flip, flip it, you know, you're done. But it takes me about five minutes to get the carrier or ICP product ready for right hand discharge. But my evaporator is still in the same position and I'm not restricting airflow. So that's why, for people that don't know, that's why Carrier and ICP do it like they do it. Uh, but anyway, so uh, guys, I'm telling y'all, you know, I've, I've had so many comments that they've told me to quit bitching about micro channel and just get used to it because it's the future and all that. Well, you know what? It might be for a lot of people and a lot of brands, but uh, according to Carrier and ICP, I've talked to several people and you know knock on wood or you know something they're not they've dabbled in it but they are not going back and if and another question is what will I do if they do end up going and everybody goes that way I don't have the answer to that question I really don't I couldn't promise you that I wouldn't shut this son of a bitch down and quit doing heat in there I know that's a strong thing, but yeah, I do hate them coils that much. I really do, because it cost me a lot of money. So uh, I'm just gonna pray to God and leave it in His hands, and you know, continue to knock on wood that carrier and ICP stay away from it, because that's the equipment that I like, and that's the equipment I continue. Uh, I plan to continue to sell until I decide to quit doing this shit. So, uh, but anyway, so guys, you know, <laughs> all you trained guys out there, I'm telling y'all, man, that equipment ain't nothing special. There's nothing special about it at all. They're building their units cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. The 13 sear thing, it, you know, my ICP man, he's pretty much out of 13 sear equipment. He's got very little left, so I'm pretty much putting in nothing but 14 sear because that is the new minimum sear rating in the South now. Um... So that's pretty much all I'm putting in because he's cleaned out a 13, but I know that train was using LG compressors in their 13 series equipment. So that was another way they had cut back. Um, now I know ICP was too, and I didn't like it, but I have noticed that I've put in four systems this week already, and I got one more to put in tomorrow and maybe another one Friday. I don't have a for sure answer on it yet, but I do know that everything I've put in this week, the four I have put in, it's all been four. No, one was a 16 sear. The other three were 14 sears. All the 14 sear equipment has had Copeland scrolls in it. So I'm very happy about that. Um, so, you know, guys, it's, it's all about how it's installed. There's nothing special about training the American Standard at all. Matter of fact, I, I'll put... I'm, I'm putting a temp store on my house this weekend. I was supposed to put it last weekend, but it rained. But I will put a ICP product. I don't care what name it has on it. I, I call them ICPs. I'll put those units up against train any day of the week because I can just see train continue to go. They're, they're digging themselves deeper and deeper in a hole, and they're building their equipment crappier and crappier and crappier, it seems like, every year. So... Anyway, I already drug this video out longer than I wanted to, so I hope y'all enjoyed it. Um, and uh, thanks for watching, and we will see you guys on the next one. Turning back.